the cross did the work. Anybody believe that? Anybody believe the cross did the work? Here, I know, I know that, that we work hard and we're supposed to. And I know that, that we have a job and that's important. And I know that you have an electricity bill and you should pay it because if not, the, the, the company is not going to answer the phone and be like, oh, no, you don't want to pay it this month? Okay, that's no problem. Like, you know, we'll just, how about the rest of the year? Just don't pay your electricity bill. No, they want their money because you have your lights. So I'm like, I get that life is life, okay? But I don't want us to forget in the midst of everything going on that the cross of Christ did all the work that it needed to do in order to make our relationship right with God. The cross did the work. So when it comes to do we need to work so we can gain position with God, the answer is no. Because the cross did the work. And I think sometimes what we need to do is just re-realize, because many of us in the room are believers, re-realize, re-remember, re-recognize the power of the work that the cross did because the blood of Jesus shed on the cross. The cross did the work. So when I say, hey, did you put on your feet the readiness of the gospel of peace, the reason we have peace is because the cross did the work that we might have peace. And maybe that could be good for you this week, just a little good. You can, you can borrow the title if you want. I give it to you this week. You don't have to give me any credit. I don't need any credit. But maybe just this week when the devil's just trying to get you down, trying to stress you out and get you anxious, someone at your job is messing with you, just maybe under your breath or maybe out loud, you just remind yourself that the cross did the work. And that what's trying to bring you down doesn't have to bring you down because the cross did the work. It's the gospel of peace. It's the, we've been talking about this for a few weeks. It's the good news of Jesus, and it was done. It's been performed. The way has been made. You're not hoping that Jesus can still do it. You're not like, oh, man, I hope Jesus wins at the end, or you know what, I'm believing that, that eventually I'll... It's like, the cross did the work. Past tense, it's been done. It's just our responsibility and our opportunity to walk in the work that's been done. The cross did the work. I want to turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Spend a little bit of time right there. This is how it starts off in Ephesians chapter 2. A little bit ominous, but it's just reality. And you were dead. See, told you. In the trespasses and sins in which you, in which you once walked. Noted without the shoes of peace that you might now have. See, now you have opportunity to put shoes on your feet that you might walk in peace in where you go. The readiness of the gospel of peace may be there as your feet. It says, everywhere my feet tread, therefore I have it, that the gospel of peace may be what your feet is treading. Therefore, everywhere you go, the gospel is moving forward because you're there and the Holy Spirit is inside of you. But before, when you didn't have the gospel of peace, you walked in your sins and in your death. And so did I. Following the course of the world, following the prince of the power of the air, talking about Satan, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. Among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of our body and our mind. The hope is that we're ruled we're ruled by the work of the cross, not by the desires of our mind. You ever went shopping before? You bought something? Then you got home and you thought, I didn't really need that. If you haven't, don't try it. It's not a great feeling. Because you just, oh, yeah, 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 I need this, or... You realize that. Ah. You ever done? You ever acted a certain way, 
out of your anger, out of your emotions, knee-jerk reaction. Maybe they call it, you, you flew off the handle. You're like, there was no handle, but I was flying for sure. And then you look back on it and you thought, I wish I wouldn't have said that. I wish I wouldn't have thrown that at whom I threw it at. I wish I wouldn't have punched that wall. Because you were led by your desires. And your desires in that moment were in the flesh. Because you weren't walking in the spirit. And the reality is, before Jesus, this is the only place that we can be. We all walk only in our own desires, in our own flesh. And whether we know it or not, without Jesus, we are dead. But the cross does the work. It says, by nature, we're children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in his mercy, because of the great love with which he has loved us, do you know how much he loves you? Even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace we have been saved. Say, by grace. And he raised us up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards, towards who? Towards us in Christ Jesus. Then it says it again in verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. Why? Because the cross did the work. It's a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one can boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Did you know that you were made for good works? Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Therefore, remember that at one time we were Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision. That's a whole other thing. I'll get to it a whole other time. By what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. But remember this in verse 12, that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers to the covenants of promise, having no Hope. Do you see? I told you it starts off a little bit ominous. But I need us to realize where we started. And if we woke up this morning thinking where we started was living in a house with air conditioning, blessed by the Father, if we think where we started was jumping in a car and driving to church and being like, okay, I'm here, show me something good. If we think where we started is, oh, here, you know, like just a few months back, I started off, and you know what? I just didn't have a full grip on, on you know, my alcoholism. I just didn't have a full grip on my sexuality. Like, I, I, yeah, I kind of had it, but that's not where you started. That is not where you started. That's not where I started. We started where the Word of God says we started, which is dead, walking in our sins, walking in our flesh, hopeless, separated from Christ. And then we find out there's nothing we can do to get in a right relationship with God. There's nothing that you can do in this room. No matter how hard you worship, no matter how hard you pray, there's nothing you can do in this room to get close to God until he decided to make a way. Yeah, you could sacrifice animals and have atonement for a minute. But we started off separated. And I think it's important this morning to remember where we came from. So we can remember when I say the cross did the work. We remember the work of Jesus on the cross and what it provides for us. That it's not just a John 3.16 3, verse. That it really is a powerful moment. That is the only moment that gives us opportunity to fall in love and to know this Father. That people who were standing up here a second ago getting touched by God and weeping. Not because of anyone except for the presence of God. That we remember we were once alienated. We were once strangers. We were once without hope. Verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus... 
you and I, who were once far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he himself is our what? Peace. Who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh. The dividing wall of hostility. That he himself is our peace. That your peace does not come from your circumstances. That our peace does not come from the tranquility of what's around us. That our peace does not come from the lack of of dysfunction or chaos. That's not where your peace comes from. And if your peace is coming from what is around you, it is a false peace. Oftentimes, I'll go out to eat. If people ask me what kind of food I want, it's typically a hamburger. If it's not, then maybe pizza or fried chicken. You know, it's just healthy stuff, okay? My wife was lecturing me last night. She was like, we're going to get healthy. And I was like, that sounds great. I'm fine with it. I said, my first question was what? How, when are my cheat meals? Like, I want to be healthy. I'm good with it. Just, I just want to know when I can eat hamburgers. Dip them in, dip them in whatever sauce I want to dip them in with french fries. Or onion rings, or whatever I want, tater tots, whatever, I don't know. But when I go to the hamburger place, say, you know, branded burger down the street, they little put a little brand on their bun on top, you know, like sizzling in there. Doesn't make the burger any better, just to be honest, and what would that matter? But I go there, pretty much all these burger places, and don't be offended, okay, I'm just sharing my heart, I would listen to your heart too, okay? They have a, they have a non-meat option. And I see that, and I think, that's cool, man. Like, that's good. I'm not against that. I've eaten them before. But when I go for a hamburger, I want a hamburger. That's just me. I don't want what is pretending to be meat. I want meat, <laughs> okay? If you invite me over for some, you know, vegan tofu, and you say, this is some vegan tofu, I'm like, great. That's what it is. No problem. Like, I would be, honestly, probably enjoy it. I like lots of different things. But if you say, hey, would you come over? I'm going to make you, I'm going to grill you a hamburger. I'm like, all right. I'll try that. <laughs> and I get over there, and you're like, well, it's not meat, you know, on the earth. But you're not going to know. I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm going to know. <laughs> <laughs> I may like it. I may love it. But I'm going to know. You understand that? Because I have had meat before. And I have had fake meat hamburgers. Call them whatever you want. Beyond beef. Okay, that's great. It is beyond. You're exactly right. You nailed it. But don't tell me what it is and then it's not. So when I go and I say I want a hamburger, I don't arrive to the counter where I order and say, you know what? I was craving a hamburger, but I think I'm going to make a shift here. I think I'm going to, do you have anything that's, that's not a hamburger, but it is a hamburger? No, I never say that to them. That's just me, okay? You do you. I'm not offended. I don't mind. In the same way, I do not want my almost peace. I don't. I know what real peace is like from the Father. I know the peace that Jesus gives. And when I need peace, that's the peace that I want. But let me tell you something. People who don't know Jesus, they don't know real peace. Because they can't. Because it says in the text that Jesus himself is our peace. And if you do not know or have Jesus himself, then you do not know or have peace. Sorry about you. You've never really tasted what it's like. You don't know. And what will happen is, as believers, I think, I, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm feeling like this is what the Spirit has been speaking to me. As, as believers, we begin to be satisfied on what is not actual peace for so long. We begin to think, that is peace. It's not. That's stressed out. That's chaos. That's dysfunction. That's worry. That's anxiety. That's hate. That's anger. That's frustration. That is the wall of hostility which Jesus paid the price for, read the text, in his flesh, 
that he may break down, he took it in his body, that he may break down the wall of hostility. And yet we're still okay with almost peace. We're still content with just a little bit of calm. Not peace, just a little bit of calm. You don't need a little bit of calm in your life. You need the peace of Jesus. And the peace of Jesus only comes from the presence of Jesus. And without knowing him, you do not know peace. But I want to... I want to speak to my believers in the room that know Jesus, and I want, to, I want to know how come we know Jesus, but it seems like peace is so far from us. It's been too long. We just got satisfied on it. Come to church, get a taste. Listen to the worship song, get a taste. It's just enough to get us by, and then we just, we're just good enough. We just, we just sustain ourselves enough in our own strength, the opposite of what we heard Marissa quote over the Scripture, and not, in, not in the strength of the Lord, in our own strength, to just get through. We'll just get through. It's not about just getting through. It's not about from point A to point B. Say a prayer, you don't go to hell. Jesus is our peace. So between, while we're getting through, if that's what you want to call it, while we're going from point A to point B, there should be a peace that surpasses all understanding that doesn't make sense rationally because it's given supernaturally. And the peace is Jesus. And he breaks down the dividing wall of hostility. And he abolishes, verse 15, the law of the commandments expressed in its ordinance that they might create in himself one new man in place of two, so making peace, and that he might reconcile us both to God, one body through the cross, thereby killing what? Hostility. This is everything that tries to come against you in the week. This is all the things that try to tell you you're depressed, you're not good enough, you're not right enough, you're too messed up, you'll never do it, you'll never make it, they don't love you, they don't like you, if you just work harder, you'll get more. These are the hostile things that are attacking you all week long. If you'll just work harder, just keep your chin up more, people will know you're great, they'll know you're awesome, and you'll get their respect, and then they'll like you. No, 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 no. Your peace is not dependent on that. The peace of Jesus is not dependent on whether they like you or whether they love you or whether they pay you or whether they call you. The peace of God is dependent on who? On Jesus. Verse 17, and he came and he preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. If you walked into the doors this morning feeling far from God, he wants peace for your life. If you walked in the room this morning feeling near to God, he wants peace for your life. I don't believe that we're called to ignore the chaos that's around us. I don't believe that you're called to just say, oh, no, no, like, I'm not hurting, I'm just fine. I don't believe that you're called to say, oh, we don't have to worry about that because in the, in the end, God wins but I do believe in the midst of chaos, in the midst of the world we live in, that every believer is called to speak Jesus and his peace regardless of what's happening. And when we focus more on what's happening around us than what God is doing through us, I think we're missing a big part of it. This week, you were part of this, and you didn't even know it. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't, but you were part of giving bicycles to kids at Beckham Elementary, the elementary that backs right up to us. We gave three bicycles away to kids, which was a great blessing, but the real blessing was it was to boost attendance. They're a Title I school. They're right behind us, and the kids were cutting class, elementary kids. 
So the principal came to us and said, we have an idea to help build attendance. We're going to have these bicycles, and we're going to give them away to those who have the highest attendance by the end of the year. We're going to, it was like already mid-year. Will you buy the, we can't buy the bicycles. Will you help us get them? We were going to get two, and we ended up getting three. I wish we could give away nine. Twenty, a hundred. The one kid, the first kid that walked out to get his new bike, he was beaming, man. They call him out of class. It's the last, second to last day of school. He's coming out. He's a sixth grade boy. He's coming around the corner, and we're like, you know, Pastor Sam and I, they're like, this is, you know, with, with the principal, with some of the staff. I'm like, this is your new bike. Man, he, he legitimately could not believe it. This is what he said. I've always wanted a bike. Whether you know it or not, this is what you did. Like, I was there and I was celebrating, but it wasn't. Like, it, it was on behalf of our, our body. This is what our body did. Many of us grew up with a bike. Many of us didn't. Many of us grew up with peace in our house. Many of us didn't. Whether we grew up far or whether we grew up near from God, the hope is that we let the peace of God bring it into our life that we might have peace, that we might know, you know what? We don't just have peace to have it. Now we have peace to give it. That's why it's shoes for your feet. So that where you go, you might deliver the same peace to who is around you. That I've found it now. I found this. I found this secret that Paul writes about. That whether he's high or whether he's low, whether he's happy or whether he's sad, whether he's angry, mad, excited, whether he's in prison or he's on a boat or he's getting kicked off the boat, whether his hands getting bit by a snake or they're calling him a heretic or whether he's preaching the gospel and writing an encouraging letter to his friends in Ephesus, no matter where he is on that scale, he has found a way to be content. In Jesus. And so then what he does once he finds it is he wants to write about it and give it. And I know this, that there's people in this room that have found a way to have peace in Jesus no matter what is going on around them. And what I want to know is are you giving it to those who are around you? Because I bet if you look to your left and you look to your right, you look behind you, you look in front of you. In this room there's someone who needs it. So why be stingy with that? Why not give the gospel of peace? Verse 18. Through him we both have access in one spirit of the Father. So that then you're no longer strangers and aliens, but you're fellow citizens and saints and members of the household of God. Did you know that? Praise God. Built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. We did a class on that just two times ago, the master class. I think we have it if you want to watch it, a recording of it maybe. Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone of which we are built. In whom the whole structure being joined together. This is the body of Christ. This is the church of Authentic. This is the church in Arlington. This is the church in the Metroplex being joined together as Christ with the cornerstone. We grow into a holy temple of the Lord. In him you're also being built together into a dwelling place for the spirit of God. We're being built together that the Spirit of God may dwell among us, but when we decide to scatter off, and when we decide we're gonna be dysfunctional, and when we decide we're not gonna have peace be on our feet everywhere we go, then how can the Spirit of God dwell? What happens is just little moments happen. It's like God just swoops through and then just swoops out. No, I want, I want everywhere that you go, the presence of God to be with you in a powerful way that the room that you walk into begins to change because God is walking in, his presence is in that room. Not the other way around. Not that you walk into the room and you change because the presence that's in the room begins to change for you and all of a sudden your peace is 86. The peace of God is nearby for everyone who wants it this morning. But many times, the peace, as the peace of God is grabbed, 
the desires of this world are let go. As the peace of God is grabbed hold of, the decision-making power in my life to get what I want and to have what I need and to make my choices and to be heard and to be right begin to die. So I won't sell you something false today and sprinkle the peace of God on you like it's fairy dust and say go and have a great time. It only comes from Jesus. But when we walk in the gospel of peace, we bring Jesus with us and those around us can experience the peace of God. Just as we have it. Wow, thank you so much for joining us right here online, all of my authentic family out there. Hey, I want to encourage you guys to stay connected with everything we have going on here. I believe that the Lord is using more now than ever media. He is using online platforms and resources in so many different ways. Take advantage of all of the encouragement that we have available for you every single week on both our Instagram or follow our page on Facebook. Hey, for those of you guys who want to partner with us with your finances, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can go to Authentic.Church and give under the Give tab, or you can give through Venmo. Hey, I love you, and I'll see you next week.